I completed the impossible GCSE maths questions that you don't have to, and I discovered a trick that will help you solve any grade 9 plus maths question. So let me take you through it. So here's the question. We have three circles. Each has a radius of four centimetres, and they're overlapping each other. And their centres, A, B, and C, are on a straight line. And we have to just calculate the area of the shaded region. Yeah, that's it. That's all we get. And uh, just to add to the fun, this is also a non-calculator question. So we're probably going to have uh, our answer in terms of pi or in terms of surds, which just you know, adds, adds to the fun, you know. So first things first, can you see that this top red area is the exact same as this bottom red area? So this means we can actually half our problem and just work on the top area and then just double it at the end. So that's all we have to do is work out the top area and then double, which makes our lives ever so slightly easier. So we're going to do a bit of a big brain move. What we're going to do is we're going to draw two equilateral triangles. And we're going to do this by drawing a line from the center of one circle to the edge of that same circle. So can you see that all of these are going to be the radius of four centimeters? So if you have a look, we have a line from A to the edge of A, and we've got a line from B to the edge of B, and we've got a line from C to the edge of C. So basically we're drawing two radii per circle and each of these are going to be worth four centimeters in length now let's check this out if you have a look i'm just going to draw over this two radii here i'm going to shade this in that is a big old sector right so if i work out the area of that sector I can take away the area of these two segments in order to get the area of the shaded region. And then I can double it to finally find my answer. So the question is, what's the angle for the sector? Well, for an equilateral triangle, all of the angles are 60 degrees, right? Now, angles on a straight line add up to 180. So 60 plus 60 is 120. So that means this angle here for the sector must also be 60 degrees. So now the hard part is actually over. Now we know what we need to do. We can actually get to the answer. So for the starters, the area of this of the sector that we're interested in is just going to be equal to the area of the sector minus two times the area of the segments, right? Where those segments, as you can see, are actually completely identical with one another because they're made up of identical triangles and ident identical sectors. So first of all, let's work out the area of the sector. So the area of the sector, all you do is you take the angle that it subtends, which is 60 degrees in this case, divided by 360, that gives you the fraction of the sector that it is for the whole circle, times by pi times the radius, which in this case is 4 squared. If you simplify that, you'll get 1 over 6 for 60 over 360. You can cancel those out. Take 1 over 6, divide them both by 60. And then you can also cancel out the 1 and the 6 by halving them both to give you 8 and 3, which gives you the final answer of 8 pi over 3. Now it's time for the segment. So the segment is just going to be the area of the sector, which we've already worked out, is 8 pi over 3, as I've written over here. And we need to minus the area of the triangle. Now what's the area of a regular triangle? Well, it's going to be half AB sine C, because remember, it's not a right angle triangle. We can't use base times height over 2. So that gives us 8 pi over 3 minus a half 4 times 4 sine 60. And remember, this is a non-calculated paper, but sine 60 you should know, and it is just root 3 over 2. If you want me to go through exactly how to remember all the different values you need to remember for the trig identities, then let me know in the comments. But for this, we're just going to have 8 over 3 pi. 4 times 4 is 16, so half of that is going to give me 8 times root 3 over 2. You can cancel this 8 with the 2 to give you 4. So my answer for the area of the segment is going to be 8 over 3 pi minus 4 root 3. So now we can bring this all together in order to get to the final step. So that means my area is the area of the sector, so 8 pi over 3, minus 2 times the area of the segments that we just worked out. And from here, all we need to do is expand and simplify, and we will get to our answer. So we have 8 over 3 pi. Expand these brackets, so 2 times 8 pi over, 16, uh, over 3 will give me 16 pi over 3, and then plus 8 root 3. 3. Now what's it going to be if we do 8 pi over 3 minus 16 pi over 3? That's just going to give me negative 8 pi over 3, right? Because we're just subtracting the numerators because the denominators are already the same, plus 8 root 3. And then I'm done, right? No, because if you remember rightly, what we need to do is multiply the area by 2 because this is just the area of the top sector. Uh, like a little segment that we had to work out, we now need to double it to get to the bottom area. I'm actually going to move the third to the front just because it looks a bit nicer when you have the positive in the front. 
8 times 2 is 16, and then you're going to have minus 16 pi over 3 for your final answer. So what was the trick that I mentioned? Well, in a lot of these impossible questions, they tend to be made up of individual circles of the same radius, just like we had in this question here. And all you really need to do is create a bunch of equilateral triangles. Equilateral triangles are super useful because we know all of their sides and we know all of the angles. We can also split them up into right angle triangles and do all kinds of fun stuff. There was another question similar to this one uh, that came around Reddit a couple of times, where you had uh, three circles and a rubber band going the outside. It said find the length of the rubber band. So if you'd like to see me do more of these, then just let me know in the comments. But other than that, I'll hope that you have a nice day.